Okay, what's up everybody? Starting a minute early. <laughs> see lots of folks in the chat. It's good to see everybody. Oh, I turn my notifications off. Uh, so um, today what we're gonna do uh, for the live stream here and the giveaway is we're gonna do uh, just a, a very casual hangout and Q and A session. I don't have any guests on today. Uh, we'll be having more guests on in the future, um, but uh, you know we're still, I guess, in the meantime of or in the process of um, you know getting uh, everything sorted out from the studio in the meantime. Uh, but uh, for this particular live stream, it's just going to be me, and um, so I figure what we could do is a normal you know Q and A like we often do. Happy Wednesday to you as well, uh, and then at the end of it, we'll do the giveaway for the Dunu SA6, uh, which is right here. Um, I'm completely lying to you. The Dunu SA6 is not in here. Um, in fact, um, Taryn has stolen it back from me. But this is a case <laughs> from Dunu. <laughs> in here is the uh, EST1112. But I figured I might as well, you know, show you something from Dunu. So <laughs> it's, a, it's about as close as it gets right now. Um, but the winner will win the uh, at the end of the live stream. I'll, I'll draw a name from our list uh, from everybody who's signed up. And also, if um, if you haven't signed up yet uh, and you're just you know, hanging out, definitely do so. Um, linked in the description is a way to sign up, um, and I'll leave the signups open until the end. Um, if you guys have already signed up, no, you can't sign up again for duplicates. I have a way of removing duplicates. So don't worry about that. Um, but uh, what you're going to win if you um, well, I see a bunch of people now signing up. What you're going to win if you if if you do win is uh, is the Dunu SA6, which is one of my favorite IEMs. In fact, it's my favorite at around five hundred dollars. And you're also going to win the Blanch modular cable system uh, from Dunu as well, which I also don't have here. But <laughs> it will be a brand new one. You won't be. It's not going to be the one that we have. <laughs> not the demo unit. Um, has the winner decided? Yeah, it's it's just a random lottery name choice. Um, we will probably um, consider how to do uh, the giveaways, uh, you know, in, in the future and maybe sort of change that up um, where people could potentially get multiple entries if they, you know, figure out ways of sharing it. But we haven't set that up, that process up yet, but that is something that we're, we're considering. You missed the last stream? Do it this time? Do, do what? Sorry. <laughs> I hope I get to your, uh, your question. Yeah, I mean that's always the downside is the uh, is the time differences. But um, yeah, in any case, um, I want to let everybody know if you're not familiar yet with uh, what we're doing here on this channel, um, we are aiming to do at least one giveaway per month. And so the last one that we did was a very, I guess, impromptu giveaway of the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, and that went great. It was great to see everybody there. And uh, this month we're doing the Dunu SA6 Blanche Cable. Uh, so I think the value there is actually really high. I mean, I think it's over $800 for the value of $900. Um, not totally sure, but uh, there's also going to be additional giveaways after this month as well. So if you don't win this one, just stay tuned to the channel, You know, be subscribed. Um, and yeah, you can still sign up. I see somebody asking, you can still sign up, just make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then add your YouTube name to the, uh, to the field. I see lots of you you guys who are in the chat signing up now as well, so that's great. Um, all right, um, so let's, without further ado, let's get into uh, just a regular q and A. I'll I'll you know, maybe do that for about an hour, and then we'll do the giveaway. Sound good? Um, everybody, let me know if the uh, if the audio quality is okay here. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, the good microphone. <laughs> this is uh, this is back to the old one because the good microphone is in the studio. Um, don't eventually we'll be doing these from the studio as well. Um, I'm just in the process of setting up a rig there, like a, a, a render rig, so that I can actually you know, create videos there too, um, with a full desk and everything. I'll be sad to leave my home office, but uh, I think the pro the productivity benefits will will definitely be there. All right, um, getting into the Q and A. Um, I see here a question: Can anyone, uh, me, uh, send you a pair of headphones for measurements um, slash review? Um, so, yeah, I would say in theory you could, but um, I would caution you on doing that because um, I live in Canada and the shipping to Canada is a real nightmare. If anybody's had to do that in the past, there's 
I mean, it, it often doesn't seem like it's as much of an annoyance as it is, um, but there's customs fees and all kinds of stuff, um, and the shipping companies here aren't exactly the uh, the greatest when it comes to that kind of stuff, especially when it comes to you know loaner units or you know trial units and stuff like that. So that's another actually barrier to entry for reviewers who live in Canada when it comes to you know manufacturers sending gear as well um, when they want it back. <laughs> it's a it can be a pain. Uh, to you know, ship through customs um, and the other thing is that like you know we could measurements take a long time this is something that people don't really know um, but so for example when I was measuring the Focal stuff um, like the, the more, more recent Focal headphones that have been released that took over four hours to do and you think it's just you know put it on the rig and then you know hit a button and off you go and in theory that is you know one of the um, I guess that's sort of how you would do it but what takes a long time is ensuring that the measurement that you have, that the results that you have are correct, and that they are that they match what you hear. Because when they when they don't, then you got to figure out was there a difference in clamp pressure, was there a difference in positioning, um, you know, was there a, even just a slight difference in like you know the headband weighting from side to side. So um, all that can have a different can, can make a, an impact. When was the seal okay? So there's a lot of time that goes into doing measurements, and if people are constantly sending in headphones for measurements, um, then you know that sort of I guess detracts from the ability to do anything else. So um, I, I would say um, you could, but it would probably depend on the headphone. Um, hope that answers your question. Um, and by the way, I do have the super chat active, but guys, don't feel like you have to use it. Um, if it, it's just that's the way that you would ensure that you know I get to your that we get to your question um, and by the way if anybody's unsure about you know who's doing the giveaway here it's um, it's headphones.com that's that's the company that I work for that's what this channel that's who owns this channel um, so that's really what we're all about here is uh, is the community with this channel um, okay let's see I didn't love the u12t what would you recommend checking out instead so my guess with the u12t if you liked the blessing 2 desk and you didn't like the u12t i would imagine you want a little bit more upper mid-range um and in that case i i wouldn't recommend the sa6 either because the the sa6 is very similar to the u12t in the tuning so you would oh is the stream okay um so yeah you would want to get something yeah that's a little bit more forward there in the upper mid-range i imagine um and then maybe has more of a distinct sub bass shelf um, because the like we're more of a contour there because I think the base level on the SA6 is actually higher like I think the SA6 is warm like warmer and more relaxed so if you if you like the dusk maybe you'd want that shelf to be more distinct um, so I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what that would be but um, uh, yeah I, I think that's sort of what what to look for um, I'd almost want to say you I mean I'm hesitant to recommend this but the Tamchin Darling with a with the flannel E tips. I think um, Theo did a review or Precog did a review on that on the channel. Um, it's not my I don't I'm not that into that IEM, but it did have good detail. Uh, it's just I found the upper mid range to be too forward for my liking. Um, and I'm just trying to think if there's something that would be more high end that you'd be into. Uh, maybe one of the Theo Audio twins um, would be more to your taste like I, again i would almost want to say monarch um over clairvoyance there because again the monarch has more of a distinct sub bass shelf it's pretty bassy though so if you're you know if you did if that's what you didn't like about the sa or about the u12t um like the bass response then uh, i don't know if the monarch would be the way to go but um i i think both of those are fantastic um hi elizabeth nice to see you from ief um, all the IEF folks, if anybody's here, awesome to see you guys. Um, love to love to chat with you guys. Um, Kryn is a good friend of mine, and uh, you know I, I, I highly respect uh, you know those guys. So along with uh, you know the audio discourse folks, Android. I'm not sure if Android's in the chat, but if he is, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, all right, Tiger three three hundred R review. You know what? I do want to review it, but. It's not available on Amazon like anywhere. It's not available like I can't find anywhere to buy it. So that's the uh, the challenge. Should I get mac and cheese for lunch? Absolutely. 
early Dunu EST 1112 impressions. Yeah, um, so straight up, I think for my preferences, the SA6, it's worth spending a little more. It's like save up a little more and get the SA6. Um, the EST 1112 does do some interesting things though. Um, and mainly it's the, it's, it's in the technical aspects. So I think the, the main issue with the EST 1112 is that the tuning is maybe not as uh, generally agreeable. Like there's somewhat of a uh, lower treble uh, peak there, but actually, you know, I find that because it has a little better upper treble extension, it kind of balances out reasonably well. It balances that out, but I still notice it. I still hear it. So, you know, I've talked about, you know, the per percussion compression issues that show up if you have like a 5k bump or 6k bump, and there's a hint of that. And with the SA6, it's kind of like the opposite. So that's kind of why my preferences lean towards the SA6. Um, and then there's also like, it's also like weirdly thick in the lower mids, um, but I can also see somebody enjoying it because the technical performance there is is pretty good and the bass response is really nice as well. Um, they are using a dynamic driver in the bass. So it took, it's funny, when I first heard it, I was like, oh man, I don't like the bass response, but I like the rest of it. And then I realized it's because the tips that I was using weren't getting the right kind of seal. So I switched to the final E tips, which kind of kill the treble a little bit, but tighten up the bass. And I was like, whoa, the bass in on the EST is really nice. Um, what headphones sound like the Edematic ER series slash Edition Viento? Uh, the Edematic series. <laughs> but head, you, do you mean over ear headphones? Mm, good question. I'm not really sure how to answer that. Um, it would be something maybe like. So I think there's a number of ways of looking at that. Um, but I would almost say something like an HD 600. Someone else can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But I think because there's the ER SR and then there's the XR series, which I think boosts the bass. So it probably depends on which one you're thinking of. Um, let's see. We'll be getting the U Unique Melody Mess 2. I didn't even know they were making one, but if they are, I would love to get that in. That'd be awesome. I, I thought the original was pretty good. The tuning wasn't for my taste because it had a pretty strong 6K bump. But, you know, and yes, even with the <laughs> making sure that the, the, the fit was correct because it's a bone conduction driver. But uh, I found that, uh, you know, that for a kind of mild V-shaped kind of thing, it was actually really detailed. Um, so yeah, I liked it. Um, you say the LCD I4, one of the best bass responses. Did I say that? I don't, <laughs> but these Skull Candy Crushers with the 12 dB bass boost. <laughs> oh my goodness, I that you caught me off guard there. <laughs> also, I haven't heard the LCD, I haven't reviewed the LCD I4, but um, that was a good one. Most fun you had reviewing a headphone slash IEM. Most fun. Um, that's a tough question. Probably the Susvara because it was just an amazing headphone and I I want one. <laughs> but they're re really expensive, right? It's like six grand. And, you know, even if I got like a reviewer discount, it would still be like four grand or something ridiculous. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Susvara is the answer there. I think also the amps and sound Kenzie and getting into those like really high end tube amps. I mean, that's some of the, when it changes it so much, in such a such an awesome way, it uh, yeah, it's really fun. I'm excited to hear the Mogwai now. Um, hopefully, I get that in for review. Um, which headphones do you da daily drive the most, and why? So this the thing is like, as a reviewer, you're constantly um, trying out new things and evaluating new things, because I mean our honestly, like we produce a lot of videos on the channel, like in very quick succession. And that means that like, it's difficult to really use the headphones that, you know, you act, you personally own because you're constantly reviewing stuff and evaluating and cross comparing and stuff like that. So, um, and that's also another reason why I haven't, you know, jumped on the, you know, saved up a ton of money for the Sesvara or anything like that. Um, or even like a you know, high-end tube amp because it's like I, you know, I'm constantly getting in gear that would make it so I wouldn't be able to use that stuff. Um, but if I had to like say what my daily driver would be of the headphones that I own, for closed back it's the LCD XC and for open back um, the, uh, the ZMF Verite. But 
uh, but the verite with the BE2 suede and a little, just a touch of EQ. <laughs> and um, that would be off of a tube amp, which I don't have anyone right here, here right now, but like, you know, if I could say that, you know, what my daily driver would be <laughs> with the uh, with the verite, that would be with a tube amp, yeah. Um, I don't have a favorite six SN seven tube. I I'm to you know full disclosure like I've heard a, a number of tube amps like I've heard actually a lot of tube amps but I'm just getting into the high end ones so and because honestly the tube amps that I heard that were not the high end stuff they weren't really that impressive um, and I just sort of thought well you know you could get a mm, kind of middling tube amp that does color the sound in some way or you could get a far less expensive but like benchmark level you know like um, reference class solid state amplifier and it would sound better so I think really that for tube amps like it's worth saving up <laughs> and get the high-end stuff because it really is good um, so that's why I don't have a, a favorite tube for that uh, any portable amp recommendations for IMs preferably something small I don't know if you need an amp like honestly is, is I mean, I, I get why it's more you'd want a DAC amp combo or something like that that would be, you know, separate from a, a, a phone or a dongle or something like that. I, I, I understand that, but I don't think you need a ton of power. So um, I just use the, uh, <laughs> sounds funny, but I use the that Radson ES100 commonly um, because it makes it also wireless when I'm, you know, for portability. Uh, but also, I mean, it's probably worth even just considering a, da uh, a DAP of some kind. Um, now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of DAPs because, I mean, I, I do use them a lot, especially if I'm, you know, trying to do critical listening and evaluations, but, um, you know, it's just having to take an extra thing with you. It's not really the greatest. Um, so, I yeah, maybe something from IFI. Um, I don't know if the hip DAC would be a good choice because people were saying there was a noise floor. I didn't have a chance to try that, but with certain sensitive IEMs, maybe that's not that great. Um, but some of the other IFI stuff, um, they have their IE match in there. And keep in mind, with IEMC, you don't really need much power. So, um, Legend X or U12T for classic rock and blues. Sorry, if anything, you'd want it to be a little bit more capable and versatile for sensitive stuff. Uh, I would say U12T uh, for classic rock and blues. Definitely U12T. Legend X is like, a flavor IEM that's m super bass focused. So, oh, I see you guys using the super chat. Um, thank you, Really Bites. Um, what's the blammiest headphone you've heard, open or closed, in the sub one thousand dollar? Wait, in the yeah sub one thousand dollar price bracket. What about any price bracket? So the blammiest headphone that I've heard is the Focal Utopia, but. It's not bass boosted, at least not off of a low output impedance source. You can boost it if you run it off of a high output impedance source, but I don't know how many people are actually doing that. Um, but yeah, that, the, the Focal headphones are super blammy, um, but a lot of people won't, I think the perception of it won't be that blammy because you know they're not as bass elevated, but they're very dynamic and punchy in that sense. So if you, so the flip side of that, if you're thinking about bass, boosted stuff that's sort of a different question i guess in the and that's at any price bracket um yeah because i mean you could say the same thing about the lcd4 the L the he6 and n none of them are actually base boosted so uh, it, it depends on what you mean by that uh, but for sub 1000 um oh you know the blammiest good question but uh, probably the focal alex um in, in fact that focal alir i have one here somewhere that I fixed. Um, the Allier, like the driver in there, is really, really blammy. The bass is fantastic on it. So yeah, Focal Alex or Allier with the clear pads if you can find that. Um, and and he, I'm saying here blammy without being you know overly bass boosted, right? That's that's kind of what I mean. Uh, because yeah, you could. I mean, again, somebody mentioned Skull Candy Crusher with plus twelve dB bass boost. I mean, depends, right? If you perceive it like that, then, you know, sure. But I, I would never do that. <laughs> um, shooting. Just saying hello. Uh, since I'm here, your choice. HD 600 versus Sundara. 
then please try Shazi Pola 39 Pola. I'll keep an eye out for that one. Um, thank you. Um, HE 600 versus Sindara. I go Sindara uh, with an amplifier because I, I, I find the instrument separation qualities to be more desirable and the bass extension is better on the Sindara compared to the HD 600, but I do like the HD 600 as well. Um, also, Sin I mean, Sindara, th there are some peaks in the treble there for the HD 600. I don't really mind them, but I do think that the Sindara is maybe just a little bit smoother there, um, which is weird to say because planers often aren't, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, I do go Sindara there. But I do think, yeah, again, HE600 is fantastic. Um, Sleepy, thank you, my friend. Have a wonderful afternoon. You as well. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to back up here. Yeah, again, let me know how the um, how the sound quality is here for the microphone. Uh I'm not sure if it's clipping because I can't see the meter right now. Did I get new glasses? Yes. <laughs> well, these are my glasses for, because they have very thin arms. Um, so when I'm actually doing my listening, um, you know, I would be wearing these and not the ones with the acetate arms um, because those ones are thicker, thick enough where they might break the seal. But those ones are for fashion. <laughs> um, I do need to actually like, change them. I only really got them because it was a two for one deal. Otherwise I probably would have just get, got these. Um, any DAP recommendations getting an N6II for now with T01 module? Um, yeah, the N6II is, um, is great, I think. Um, but again, I, I haven't spent that much time with that many DAPs because I'm not a normally a DAP user, um, but I'll I'll use them when I'm evaluating stuff, right? So, like, for example, you know, I think the, the iBasa DX220 is a fantastic sounding DAP. Um, but one of the things I don't like about those iBasas is that, for whatever reason, you can't use them as a regular DAC and charge them at the same time. You can use it as a regular DAC. A lot of people didn't know how to do that, but you have to have it charged before you do that. So that's kind of annoying. Um, Uh, is the Odyssey LCD XC a real step up from the Aeon to Noir close back? I'm assuming you mean with the perforated pads. Um, for technical performance, absolutely. The XC is, it smokes that headphone. But um, as I mentioned in the review of the Noir, uh, you know, the XC is one that I, I recommend with EQ. So if you have Equalizer APO, I'll put together a profile for it. I'll do a video on the new XC uh, Carbon um, because actually did both the Odyssey LCD X and the XC um, have had their pads changed, and I think they've made some other tweaks as well. And Odyssey recently released a post up on HeadFi about this, and I can finally talk about it. <laughs> um, but um, the bottom line is that these ones with the new pads, the ones from 2021, officially want the ones from 2021, um, they need far less EQ. Um, in fact, they're, they don't really need EQ, but I would still do it, right? So that's kind of the, the bottom line there. Um, and if you're somebody who never EQs, I could actually see a preference for the default Aeon 2 Noir with perforated pads. Um, so I, I would say just keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, no, my my preference is absolutely with the LCD XC. That's probably the, it, honestly, for me, that's the most fun I've had with a close back, including the Stelia and some, which is over there, and some of the, like, uh, I've tried the ZMF Verite closed, which is also good, um, but... I think the XC competes in that super flagship range. Um, collab with DMS? Yeah, I really like DMS. Um, I want to do more collabs with him. He's, uh, he's a good guy. Um, let's see. For IEMs like the Dunu, I assume you mean SA6, or other low impedance headphones, how much difference does a good amp make? So yeah, that's the thing really not much. Um, if anything, it's just, it's just moving the DAC amp or whatever your source is outside of, you know, a motherboard or a phone or, you know, whatever else, right? Whatever you'd be actually, you know, playing it from. Um, you know, a good DAC is better than a bad DAC, right? Or a good implementation of a DAC is better than onboard generally. So, you know, doing that is probably all you need to do. 
Um, but I don't re like you don't need to give it power if that makes sense because they're not you know like w at what point like why do you need power for really sensitive IEMs if anything you would want something that's very flexible and versatile and has very low noise floor and low output impedance that's really what you should be looking for I think uh, what are your favorite tips with the audio monarch uh, I really like the Dakoni foam tips for the monarch that's my favorite because um, actually one of the like the tips that came with it I think some of the spin fits they there's something kind of weird in the treble with those and then I switched to the Dakoni foam that was totally fine um, do you have an EQ profile for the HD 560s? I didn't bother making one because I thought it was pretty good. Like, yeah, you could t curve some of the lower treble there. It's probably a good idea, but that also dependent, it was dependent on the clamp pressure. It's actually something that people don't realize when you see a measurement, you think that's like definitively the way that this sounds, that like a thing sounds when you, when you read it, but that's not really the case. Like that's how that headphone measures at that moment in those given conditions, right? So if you maybe have different conditions like a different clamp force or a different coupling or on the on, the, on an actual human head, because remember, ear and cheek simulators like this are not, sorry, yeah, like this, are not actual human hit heads, right? The only thing that's close to an actual human head, pardon me, is the BNK5128. Uh, I mean, yes, I know there are other 711 couplers that are meant to be to simulate that but i think of the 512 it's the one that's closer to an actual human um i'd say it's worth it i heard them both in the treble resolution on the x was one oh i think you're yeah you're referencing i'm not sure what you're referencing the treble resolution on the x lcd x was one of the parts i feel was significantly and noticeably better than the 2f yeah i think that the lcd x is definitely more detailed than the 2f um, but, uh, you know, the LCD 2F is also really, you know, technically impressive. Um, I got to catch up here, guys. <laughs> What's your favorite clothes back under $500? Um, <laughs> AKG K371. <laughs> uh, I recommend that a lot. Um, I saw, I think, um, ASR reviewed the Celeste and compared it against the K371 and said they liked the K371 better. And I was just like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't get there with you. Um, it's just like they said it was more detailed. And it's like, no. <laughs> uh, some people just, I don't think, are picking up on the same things. Actually, the Aeon, they did recommend the Aeon closed RT. And I think that's around $500. And if it does actually sound the way that it measures, it would be good, but the drawbacks are going to be the same as they are with the Noir, which is very, very poor dynamics. So I'd say it depends on what you're looking for. Um, rules for the Mogwai. Don't get it wet and don't feed it after midnight. <laughs> One YouTube reviewer is claiming to present the actual audio presented by the Sennheiser and Sunny earbuds. Is that even possible to do accurate? I, I assume you mean uh, sound demos? Because no, absolutely not. Sound demos are not accurate whatsoever. At best, they have comparative value. But you, the thing you have to consider is, you know, the compounding effect for A, the, um, the headphone on the rig that's being used to record it, which is not going to be accurate <laughs> um, and be the the way that that interacts with what you the frequency response of the headphone that you are wearing and so this is going to color the sound significantly um, and that that last component is always going to be there so even if you have a reference and that's the thing right even if you have a reference class headphone like reference in the sense of what people think is totally neutral there the, the idea of neutral hasn't been figured out in headphones the way that it has in speakers I think the only way you could maybe get close to this would be using studio monitors, but then you're also also got like flat measuring studio monitors, but then you're also gonna be in a room and then that's, and at a certain distance and then that's gonna have an impact. Um, and then again, if you're moving back to headphones, you also have to take into consideration the coupling on both the rig that's being used to record it and your own head. So it's just not like, they're not accurate. Um, now there are some that, that there's some usefulness in terms of 
you know, comparing them to one another, um, right? So you can see where the relative, you know, peaks and dips are and whatnot, their total balances. But that really requires understanding the nuance for that. And I think this is the reason why I don't do sound demos. I think it's more damaging to represent that for, because I think the majority of people won't be able to understand that. The majority of people will just listen to it and, go, and think, oh, that's what it sounds like. And that's just not true. Plus, you don't get any of the technical performance because you're listening to it through another headphone. Um, people are asking about differences in DAX and amps. And I have to state, like, as clearly as possible that if you already have a system, like a DAC amp combo or a DAC and an amplifier, that is good enough. Like, I don't know, like any entry level DAC, not entry level, but like something like a Modius Magnus stack or a Sonko's LAQXD1 and a shit Jodenheim, or I don't know, like that kind of stuff, right? SMSL SU9 and then a matching amplifier, THX AAA something, right? Uh, you know, that's going to be all you need because the differences between that and even stuff that costs $2,000 or more is very, very, very minimal. So, you know, when people are asking, you know, what, whether they can, you know, expect differences, the answer is, well, yes, but, but n likely not enough um, for it to be worth, you know, going into and, and worth doing over just buying a different headphone. Um, or, a, or a more high-end headphone, because that's really, especially these days, right? DAX and amps, they do make a difference, but uh, unless you're talking about high-end tube amps like the Kenzie or the, you know, the stuff from Amps and Sound and some of the other stuff like that, um, it's really not going to make anywhere near the, the, the difference um, that just spending that same money on a higher-end headphone would. Um, hey, I see Metal571 in the chat. Yeah, you, you didn't see me hold hold this up this is this is the sa6 <laughs> people who are here earlier know no <laughs> um yeah right <laughs> dude makes the uh, dude makes lcd x i would love to see dude make an over your headphone that'd be pretty cool what would your low budget choice for a full-size headphone system be depends what lo you mean by low budget but um i would go Probably a Modi Magni stack with uh, with a Sennheiser HD 6XX, which is right here. Oh, wait, you can't see it. Why is that? Okay, there's a cable stuck. Um, that's probably what I would do. Uh, a little higher, you would go with that same DAC amp combo or Modius Magnus, depending on, again, where your budget budget is. And then, uh, yeah, I'll go with a Hi-Fi Man Sundara. I think those two really dominate that that budget or I guess entry to mid level and then you don't really need to think about anything up until like you know seven hundred dollars really um, as long as you're okay with open back because there are some close backs in there that you may want to consider I gotta catch up here guys <laughs> I just tried the head headphone yesterday and it was heavy and uncomfortable. Yeah, it's a heavy headphone. That's uh, that's always my concern with it. Like I, I like the sound, but it's a heavy, it's a heavy boy. <laughs> it's tough though. I mean, I talked to those guys and they're really passionate about this. And um, my understanding is that, you know, they would, they won't, they would have wanted to make it lighter, but then that would have been come at the cost of, um, you know, the, the performance. And so for that type of transducer, um, it uh, it's difficult to do. Thoughts on the a SA6 versus RSV? I have the RSV right here. Um, so the RSV is more of a classically neutral kind of sound, um, and it's good. Actually, somebody was asking about the about they didn't like the um, U12T, but they liked the Blessing to Dusk. The RSV maybe would be an option there, maybe. Uh, doesn't have the same kind of base shelf as the uh, or the blessing to dusk, but um, yeah, I it's it's worth looking at. Um, so yeah, the RSV is more classically neutral, and the SA6 SA6 is um, 
more relaxed there in the upper mids a little bit. So the SA6 I find is the more easygoing I am um, with a little bit more fun. Both are tuned well, I think. My tuning preference lines up a little more closely with the Dudu SA6, but I would say it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm listening for jazz and acoustic and classical, I'd probably pick, I'd probably go for the RSV. But if I'm listening to rock and metal and stuff that doesn't fully token the full frequency range, then maybe the uh, the SA6. It's, it's a more fun headphone, I, I am, I think. Um, so uh, I, I think I even made a post about this when I was I did my post on the first impressions of the RSV up on the headphone community forum, if you guys want to check that out. Um, and one of the things I was even sort of debating, you know, um, subconsciously with, you know, with myself there is, is, uh, would I take the RSV over the SA6, you know, like if, if price wasn't a factor because the RSV is more expensive. And my answer to that was maybe because I don't really think that it's better in, in technical performance than the SA6. Um, I think... I mean, maybe in some aspects, like soundstage was decent on it and the separation qualities were good, but the detail I didn't find to be, you know, noticeably better um, or like you know, significantly better. But the, the main area where the RSV has an advantage, in my opinion, is the treble extension is considerably better on the RSV. The RSV has a treble, ex treble extension that's similar to that of the clairvoyance, which it's not quite the same, but um, more so than the SA6. So... I think if that's that's a priority, then then the RSV would be the way to go. How do you remember all the headphone names? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta be a nerd. <laughs> I'm gonna be a headphone nerd. Is instrument separation imaging? No. So, as an example, the Im the image sep instrument separation on the LCD X or planers in general is going to be better than that on of you know what you get with dynamics dynamic drum headphones or electrodynamics um but that's different from image placement and the even distribution of images across the across the stage and you can test this with um with any tracks that pan from one side to the other they have like moments that you know you hear an instrument going from one side left side to right side um if the crossover point is immediate then the imaging's not very good but that doesn't mean that you don't have really good incisive image separation, instrument separation for those headphones. And I actually argue that in most cases, planar magnetic headphones don't have as good uh, image distribution as, or as even image distribution as uh, dynamic, dynamic driver headphones, or, you know, there's exceptions obviously, but like, you know, f at around the whatever price you could get a, a headphone that images better than most planars. Um, and uh, I, have some suspicions as to why that is um, like for example the angle of the driver um, and the way that they're sort of set into the into the baffles um, that can make a difference um, but yeah in general um, image separation and it, imaging are not I don't view them as the same thing like the Aeon 2 Noir is a great example of that or just the Aeon 2 in general it has really good instrument separation but the imaging I would say is not its strong point um, Let's see, has any Chi-Fi headphone that has really surprised you? Um, it depends what you mean by Chi-Fi here. Um, but yeah, the Dunu SA6, the as well as the Softears RSV has been really good. Um, I mean, I guess surprised me is, it, I, I'm not really surprised because when I see, you know, a great frequency response, I, I'm not really surprised when it turns out to sound great, right? At least if that's, if I've seen it before, I've heard it, right? Um, because normally I'll listen before I measure, if I'm the one doing the measures, measurements. Um, I'm trying to think of something else. I mean, do you classify the, the Hi-Fi Man stuff as Chi-Fi? Because in that sense, I was absolutely surprised by the Sundara, the Ananda, and the Aria. I, uh, you know, when I first heard those, I was like, whoa, this is pretty good for the price. <laughs> uh, more so, I mean, the, the Aria, I wouldn't say is good for the price. That's sort of a uh, it's great. I love the Aria, but like that is in the really high end price bracket already. <laughs> um, would you say that the current market of a hundred dollar headphone amps gives you all you need 
85% for a pair of cans. Yeah, absolutely. As long as they don't blow up on you like the L30. <laughs> and I saw the video of somebody with a shit Magni 3 Plus that was like smoking around fire. <laughs> so I don't know what they're doing, but man, that's not good if that stuff's, if that's actually happening. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really think that's, I mean, it's not $100, but like even this THX AAA1 thing is literally all you need for every headphone. Sounds great. The, what I would caution people against is stuff like this. All right, this is the Cadas Tone Pro 2, Tone 2 Pro. And it's it's adorable. It's really small, and it's, it's they've thrown so much stuff into here. This is basically a sound card that's been, that has a housing on it. But I would caution people against this for a desktop setup. This is for portable use, yes which is fine, but if you're just using this, it's the soundstage on this is extremely narrow um, and it really crushes the, the like, it makes everything sound like a 650 soundstage. <laughs> uh, so, and, and I'm not, I can't tell you why, um, this may measure well, but it's, it's like stuff like this and the few E10K, I really think they're limited by, most likely limited by the op amps that they're using, so. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to do some more testing on that and hook that up to other amplifiers to see if the issue here is the is the <coughs> pardon me is the op amps or or more to do with the DAC. My guess is it's the op amps. <clears throat> no clipping sounds perfect. Awesome. Sleepy. Trying to pick between the Andromeda 2020 and the LZD XC. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, those could not be more different. <laughs> um, so again, LCD XC is one that mm, I still think, if you want to get the most out of it, EQ is the way to go. And Drama to 2020, I don't really think you would need EQ for that. But and I know uh, I know Precog really likes the Andromeda 2020. I liked it, but it wasn't like to me. It wasn't like my favorite. I think it used to be really the. I guess the benchmark IEM to get, but these days, I don't know. There's a lot of competition out there. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, even from like the Sony M9 and all the, I mean, I know, uh, Precog did the kilobuck shootout there. It's worth looking at all of those and seeing sort of which qualities you line up more closely with, because I don't think it's as obvious now, just as it might've been in the past. Um, but personally, I do think that the Andromeda 2020 was an improvement over the original Andromeda especially for those who are treble sensitive. Um, now that the clear is 990, would you recommend the clear or Celeste ignoring open versus closed? The clear, absolutely. That, I think people also need to realize that closed back headphones, just in general, are not gonna be as good as open back headphones. There are examples of open back headphones are, that are worse, but um, if you had, like for example, the Aeon 2 open was just bizarre, um, but uh, you know, if you if you're comparing one to one, you know, a closed back at a given price point, you can probably find an open back at that same price point that's better. So that's sort of why what I'm thinking. Um, let's see where where are we here? I, <laughs> I gotta catch up to you guys. Otherwise, it's like I'm talking about something that is no longer relevant. Um, the resolution is out of this world right up there with the 07 and 09. What, what are you guys talking about here? Oh, the LCD X? Interesting. I So I've heard the 07, and I've heard the 09 at Can Jam. I might... The cops are after me. You guys can probably hear that. Um, I may have the line on getting a 009 up at some point from a community member who is... Um, considering sending it in for evaluation. You're trying to, yeah. Man, there's a lot of questions here that I just, it's stuff I have not heard. <laughs> Metal571 says, I am lazy AF and I want my weekends free. <laughs> <laughs> not to do another job yeah if i if i had another job like this is my job like doing headphone stuff is my job so if i had another job it would be a challenge 
Oh, you're probably talking about LCD 4 being up there with 009. So what I'm interested in is, because I know Metal doesn't care about dynamics, <laughs> what I'm interested in is, do these e-stats have dynamics? Because I still have the Sonoma here, and the Sonoma, while it had good detail, and the frequency response was decent, pretty good actually, um, it didn't have any, like all that much going on for dynamics. So, um, And I know they EQ well, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm curious uh, about the 009, and if I can EQ it to be, yeah, a little more engaging there. Yeah, man, Metal, you got to try the Dunu SA6. I, I have the feeling it'll be right up your alley, like the kind of tuning. I mean, if you've heard the U12T, right? Like the U12T is like the SA6 on steroids. Um, that is, I don't know, that's still my favorite IEM, the U12T. I mean, and the Odin, yes, but I, I still prefer the, uh, the U12T's tuning. It's just more like versatile, I guess, you know? I think that's, that's the thing. It's like if everything were well recorded, you may want to get something that's closer to the tuning of the Odin or, you know, something with a little more upper mid-range there. But the reality is, like, I listen to a lot of garbage. So that's, that's why the U12T and the SA6 are more versatile. Have you tried the any Felix Audio tube amps? Yeah, I actually have one here right now, the Felix Audio Echo. Um, but I think there's actually something wrong with this one. I think it's a... I don't know, it was, a, it was a demo unit that was sent, but I think it was a, there's something wrong with one of the tubes. I need to go send that back. Um, but I, yeah, the Felix, I, mean, I should be getting the Elise and the Euphoria in at some point soon to evaluate. Um, we have them at the office and we're testing them out, but uh, we haven't had enough time to like, you know, go back and forth and swap and see sort of what's best for what. But um, I know Android really liked it. Paul, thank you. Um, the JDS Labs Element 2 and the Modius slash Magnus are both $400, except the smaller size. Uh, oh, you're talking about the... Okay, yeah. The Element 2 is a great another great option. Sorry, yes, that's totally. Um, is, the, is the Element 2 balanced, though? Um, I think I think the, the main benefit of that is... That, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but is that an all-in-one setup? Because that might be, you know, the way to go um, if you want an all-in-one. Did the 6K dip on the SA6 bother me? Not really, no. Um, I mean, I hear it, but it's that's one of the things that makes it really versatile. <laughs> um, and if you're especially if you're sensitive to lower trouble stuff, that's, again, why I think... Like Metal 571 is definitely sensitive to lower trouble stuff. <laughs> so that's why I think the SA6 might fit the bill there. You know, I, I don't know if he still owns... Sorry, I'm just replying to Sleepy here. I don't know if Android actually owns the uh, Elise still because... Yeah, maybe he does. I'm not sure. But uh, I know he bought a Sospara, so... <laughs> Which is... Uh, yeah. Endgame. Uh, should we consider buying a Focal Allegia in 2021? Uh, if you can find one at the Adorama or whatever that, I'm not sure where it was being sold, but they had it a, a really crazy price on that for like $500 or something or $400. Um, I would recommend it, but I think what you can do then is is get the Celesti pads and put those on the Allegia and it, it kind of, it doesn't turn it into a Celesti, but it does improve the frequency response there, especially for the base and lower mid-range transition. Which is, which is pretty weird. Like, I'll, I own the Allegia, and I'll be the first person to say that's pretty weird. Um, any info? Oh, uh, really? Bites, thank you. Uh, any info about a new over ear Odyssey coming in April? No, I have not heard anything about a new Odyssey coming in April. Um, the only thing that Odyssey was, that I'm, I'm aware of at least, that Odyssey was talking about doing in April is. Uh, talking about what happened with the, the changes that happened to their existing lineup, which is the new pads and uh, I think some other s small differences. Um, that I, It's worth reading that post that they put up on Head5 about that. Um, guys, if you're just coming into this uh, now, um, we'll be doing the giveaway here at the end of the Q&A session. Just, uh, if you haven't signed up yet, definitely do, and I will add, add your names to the, to the list. 
Uh, it's, in, it's linked in the description of this, this uh, live stream. Uh, I've not heard the quest style CMA400i, sorry. Go Go Penguin is awesome, yes. Aria versus HD100S with EQ in play. This is a very good question because I've just been listening to the Aria more with uh, with some bass boost EQ as well. Just I'm trying to like simulate dynamics because I, like one of the things I'm trying to figure out is where if there's a measurable phenomenon for macro dynamics, like if it, if it shows up in measurements, because so far like it's impossible to tell just by looking at a graph whether or not something has good macro dynamics. Um, and so I'm doing all kinds of tests like with in-ear mics to see if, you know, the on-head response is different because of coupling issues or anything like that. Turns out it's not. <laughs> Turns out it, it, there's no difference there. Um, but maybe it has something to do with, you know, the, the coupling and the way that the air move, the air pressure is or something like that. Um, but then the other side of it too would be that, you know, maybe like, maybe it's measuring a certain way, but that's not actually the way that it's heard. So I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Um, but that's why I've also tried to EQ the, the bass in the area. So it, to answer that question, I think, I do think that for micro dynamics and micro detail, I'd give the edge still to the HD100S, but for instrument separation and clarity for the images as a result of it and depth, I, that's a, it's a tough call. And also, I mean, the bass on the area is just flat out better. So yeah, it's a tough call. Um, I think those two, like, if you want a dynamic driver presentation, HD100S. If you want a planar presentation, Aria. It's really, I think, where, what it comes down to. Because they both do well at similar things. Oh, you've heard something about an Odyssey headphone coming in April that I haven't? That that, that would be exciting. I would be very excited for that. Um, and, if, and if that's the case, then, uh, yeah, that, that would be great. <laughs> HD6XX with brand new pads isn't veiled, that's why. Oh yeah, the pad wear is a big deal on uh, <clears throat> those Sennheiser headphones. Um, as they are in Bayer Dynamics, I'm sure. Um, is the SA6 worth it over the Blessing 2? So I like the SA6 better than the Blessing 2, flat out. And I like it better than the Dusk as well. I think it's more detailed, but um, I could see reasons to go with the Blessing 2 if you prefer more upper mid-range, so it depends on what you like. What do you think about the Canera Sif and or the Moondrop SSR? Think about buying those. Did not like the Moondrop SSR. That thing is super shouty. Um, very forward upper mid-range. Not my thing at all. Haven't heard the Sif. I have the Canera Norn here, which is not particularly good. At least it's for my purposes. It's super V-shaped, bassy madness. Um, I, I mean, it's not. It's not like the treble balance is all that weird. Um, it's it's just that you know it's just all bass and treble. And then uh, the, I don't find the, it it to be particularly detailed either. Um, so I don't know why I would get that over an SA six. Man, I see so many comments about like DAX and amps and, and DAPs and stuff. I, I just really got to say like, I mean, it, it, after a certain point, I mean, get something that is like well regarded in general. And then like, I would say focus most of your, I guess, interest in, uh, in higher end headphones. Put most of your money towards higher end headphones because um, that's going to make a way bigger difference until you get to the crazy tube amp stuff. And then that's where that to to that thing totally changes. Uh, let's see. What's the difference between the Focal Celeste and the Radiance? If you watch my Celeste review, I did actually show, I overlaid the measurements. Radiance is a little more laid back and less forward. Um, and it's also a little bassier. But I think the Celeste actually is, as a result of its, the perception of the details is, it's more intimate, but it's also, because um, they're a little more towards you. But as a result, those details kind of stand out a little bit more. It has the HD6XX effect in a certain sense, um, where the radiance doesn't as much. HD600 or Sundaras for the classical and instrumental music. Either one. 
they're both good for that. Sorry, I know that doesn't help, but <laughs> yeah. Celesti is a fun tuning radiance is more for reference. No, I'd go the other way around. Celesti is more for reference, radiance is more for fun. I mean, their their tuning is basically the same, just the radiance has more bass. <laughs> so that's uh yeah. What's the best value on the market in terms of headphones price to performance ratio? Uh HD6XX and an amplifier or Hi-Fi and Sundara. That hasn't changed. And it's Sundara and an amplifier. Like, I again, I like the HD600 a lot. Um, but I still think that for value, because the HD600, they don't have a drop version of that. So the HD600 is still at its, you know, $300 to $400 price point. And at that point, you could get a Sundara. And I think, I don't know, I would take the Sundara with an amplifier. I don't have any thoughts on the Kyan N3 Pro. Sorry, I haven't heard it. Um, the one, the other one I want to try, the one I want to, I want to get in is that um, Audio Technica R70X. I've heard it, and the main thing that turned me off of it, because I actually was, that was at the time when I was looking to buy a headphone in that price range, and it sounded good, but the what I hated was the comfort and the, the way the build worked. It was not like the the that that style of headband is not doesn't work for me. It's very clampy in weird ways. How did the tuning switches of the SA6 work? Good question. They make very little difference. <laughs> um, I actually have a... Let's see if I can show you guys this graph. Let's see. There. That is the Duno SA6 with the base tuning, tuning switch. So if anybody's unaware, the Duno SA6 has a switch for the base. I don't know if you guys can see this, but... Um, when you have the base toggle on, um, you get the the orange line here, the elevated base boost. It's a one and a half dB base boost. That's really all it is. And it, it tapers down to one, depending on where you're looking at it. And the green line, yeah, is with it turned off. So th the difference is, is very minimal. Hope that helps. Um, someone's asking, Verite or Empyrean at, for $2,200? Um, you can get a Verite for $2,200. That's, you can get an Empyrean for $2,200. Um, so personally, I would not get an Empyrean. I just, um, I mean, I, I do think it's great for comfort and build quality, but I don't think it's competitive, um, for its sound quality. Um, the Verite is more of a somewhat flavored sounding headphone, but its technical performance absolutely is competitive, um, for dynamic driver headphones. Um, so in some sense, I would almost say go Verite closed. Verite open, it depends more on the pads and the tube amp and, you know, whatever else you're doing. Um, but yeah, uh, that's sort of my take on that. I, I don't know. I think for $2,200, $2, both of those get quite, I mean, those are good deals. I assume you're buying used. I'm not sure where you're getting that from. Um, but yeah, the Empyrean, like. The LCD X is more detailed than the Empyrean and a better tuning, like this one. Um, so same with the uh, LCD 2, to be honest. Um, get the Japan R70X, not Taiwanese. I'm not, mm, interesting, I didn't know there was a difference. I should check that out. Does the ZMFO Tour need amping? Yes. Can you drive it from LG G8X? I don't know anything about that phone. I don't know why you would get a tour and not get an app though. That's, I, that, yeah. Um, I have an AKG from Samsung Galaxy S8. Oh, you're, that's your driving, okay. And Really need new earphones with wire and a jack. What could you advise? Um, I can't. <laughs> earphones or headphones or IEMs? Not really sure. Or do you? Oh, you have. Okay, you have the AKG from Samsung. I I see what you're saying. Okay, 
not I, I thought you meant AKG K371. So I would say AKG K361 if you want the over ear stuff, but for like in ear stuff at around $100, Moondrop Starfield or that new one from the new one the the Aria, Aria, somebody was saying talking about it. I need I'm I have one on the way, but um I don't have it yet, so we'll see. Thoughts on the AN2C. I did a video on the AN, I've done a video on both of those. The AN2C without the tuning filters is really weird. Um, not weird, it's just very aggressive in the treble. But with the perforated pads, you don't need to use the tuning filters, so you don't blunt the detail. Um, and uh, so yeah, I, if you have an AN2C, I really recommend the perforated pads because the tuning there was solid. Um, the only downside, honestly, with those is that the dynamics really aren't there. Like the, the macro dynamic, the punch, it's not there, even though the bass is elevated. But um, for honestly, for the form factor and the type of device that it is and the comfort that it has, yeah, fantastic. Um, it, it's something that like I could see myself personally buying. Um, just, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, I, I would kind of miss the, the dynamics there. Oh man, the chat chat's going crazy here. <laughs> this is an interesting question. Uh, do you think Focal will one day design and create a planar magnetic headphone, or will they stay with dynamic drivers? So the so no, I I think Focal will stick with dynamic drivers. But the reason for that is because their um, their headphone drivers are their speaker drivers, um, and they're and they're set up to do electrodynamic speakers, so like moving coil stuff. But I, I think it would be cool, right? Like, it would be a lot of fun. Um, better with the Noir Pad. And, and two clothes are good, better with the Noir Pads. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, um, actually, Marius, send me... I, I emailed you, Marius. <laughs> send me send me your... Uh, or reply to that email and send me your address so we can send you that. You won a spark um, at the, in the Focal live stream we did. Um... Trellis, thank you. I find the Allegia a little boring, base light. Will the LCD XC be better for me? Actually, so first thing I would do there, if you own the Allegia, I either EQ it and boost the base, or get the Celis D pads because they do elevate the base on the Allegia. Or they, they balance it out a little bit more. Um, the LCD XC, once again, is not base boosted. In fact, the LCD XC is more of a kind of like generally neutral kind of sound. Um, but I, I honestly think that the distance, like on the on the current XC, current version, the distance between the upper mids and then the lower mids and bass is almost too much, which is like totally not normal for Odyssey headphones. <laughs> At least or it, it hasn't been normal, right? Um, but... So that's why I think it, you know, can use some EQ and add a bass shelf. But it can, that's the that's the thing with the XC and the X and all those Odysseys, they can really handle EQ. So I think it's worth it. Um, just EQ, don't pad roll. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not into pad rolling on the LCD X on on all these um, Odysseys. Yeah, I'll be doing the giveaway in maybe five minutes. So again, if you guys haven't signed up, definitely do so. Wish you get the Tin Hi-Fi P1 and P2. Uh, I have the P2 here. Um, I'll probably be reviewing it soon, but it's a weird, weird uh, yeah. <laughs> the uh, Yeah, the trouble is insane on that thing. Do you think the Focal will get into the IEM market? If they do, do you think it will go dynamic hybrid balanced armature? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, so they, they do make IEMs, Focal Spark, but I know what you mean, like, you know, let's say flagship IEMs. Um, I'm not sure what they're gonna do. I don't uh, I don't have a direct line to that or anything. Scott, thank you. Type 5128 versus Gross for measurements, assuming I can afford them. <laughs> Are you gonna buy one? That's crazy. Uh, 5128 is like really expensive. And the even the Gross stuff is like, you know, 10 grand minimum. Um, so right now, for reading measurements. I'm gonna say the gross stuff, like, so really what you're asking here is 5128 versus 711 couplers, um, because gross is just one example of 711 couplers currently. 
Um, and because BNK has hats, head and torso simulators that are also compliant with that standard, uh, with or that yeah, with the same standard. So um, for readability, right now I'm going. I'm going to say Gross and BNK seven one one couplers, um, because there's only one person who's publishing measurements on a five one two eight. And the pro as much as I respect that, respect Jude and what he's doing there, this has no comparative value um, because we can't look at, you know, measurements, one person's measurements and compare them against another person's measurements. Um, we can't just, you know, take a look at that and say, oh, well, here's how this measures relative to a reference point because there's so few that have been actually done on that. Um, if, if Jude ever decides to release a database, then I think it would be more interesting. But he would also need to establish a target curve for that headphone or for that um, that that rig. Um, in theory, you could just extrapolate the, the Harman target and apply that to a five, a, you know, what's done on a five one two eight. But I think it takes. I don't. Know, I think that's going to take some some doing. Um, now, personally, I would love to get a five one two eight. That would be amazing. Uh, because there's so much more that you can test there than what you can with the 711 stuff. Because the 711 stuff, I'm not sure everybody knows this, but they're rated for accuracy up to 10K. Now, when they show information above 10K, it doesn't mean that that stuff is irrelevant. It just means that it's not rated for accuracy for those for that stuff. So um, those are indicators of something. They're just not as accurate indicators as the rest of the frequency response. Whereas on the 5128, it, it, it is accurate above 10K. So uh, yeah, that's, I would love to. <laughs> uh, Steve, thank you. I'm buying a ZMFVC. Can you give it your worst critique? You said color. Does that mean it doesn't present neutral FR or original tent or not? Um, no, no, the VC would be the one that I would go for. If I, you know, like if I was buying it you know, today, I would go for the VC because the benefits of close back, and then also I think it has a better frequency response. Um, it's my worst critique of it. It's pretty hot at 5K. <laughs> That's about it. But I, honestly, the, the rest of the tuning is not is not uh, all that, you know, it's a little on the on a, like warm side, but not in a bad way. Um, and it does have the, the, I guess, close back dip there in the lower mids. So I think it's good. Um, but I, I haven't gotten a chance to review it, so I've only heard Tyler's. All right, guys, two more questions and then we'll do the giveaway. What's your favorite DAC chip? Um, right now it's the ES9038 Pro, which is in the Matrix Xsaber Pro, but it's more about implementation than it is about the actual chip. And I do like some of the FPGPA, F, whatever that stuff is from Cord. Like I heard the... Hugo TT2 and some of that stuff I think is pretty good too, but it's ridiculously expensive, unnecessarily expensive. So, um, yeah, for off the shelf chips, it is that ES9038 Pro. Um, and is going from the 400i to the Sandara worth the money? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sorry, I see you talking about psychoacoustic extra perception. I'm not sure what that's in reference to. Focal radiance is more detailed than the Atticus, yeah, but I think the Attic Atticus has a bigger sound stage. The more you interact with audio gear, the less responsive you become. <laughs> less res less responsive is in like less discerning. I'm not sure what you mean by that. It's just you just don't respond to people. <laughs> Blam. <laughs> uh, people are people are asking about like bass headphones, V-shaped headphones. I think, I think people miss, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, say your preferences are wrong because it's preferences. You can like what you want to like, right? 
But I also think that there's a perception of neutral or like, like neutral because I haven't figured out reference class tunings and headphones as boring um, because they don't really make your music do anything fun. Um, but if you have highly detailed neutral reference sounding re reference class or like really good technical performance for neutral reference class headphones, they will always sound better than the boosted ones, right? And they will always be preferred. They will always sound cl more clear. Now, I think there are still reasons to look at stuff that is a little bit more like flavor oriented, but I wouldn't really say that it should deviate all that much. Um, it should maybe deviate in very subtle ways. A good example of this is the Focal Clear. There is a slight forward this, forwardness there to 1.5K, but the way that it's done is intelligent because it's it's balanced out by where the rest of the frequency response is. So I would, I would say that what's more important than adherence to a target is balance for fundamental and harmonic in various different places. And when you achieve that, like you can achieve that without adhering to the target. So in the case of the clear, it has the effect that pronounced sort of mid-range forwardness, it has the effect of, of making vocals be a little bit more engaging. I think that's a really enjoyable quality. But if it weren't balanced out by the rest of the frequency response there, like the upper mids and then the lower mids and the treble, if it weren't balanced out properly, then it would come across as sort of nasally and honky. But because it is balanced out, it doesn't come across that way. So I, I'm not sure that answers that question, but um, I think a lot of people who, you know, they think they like something, when you get into higher end headphones, you'll realize that there are actually real benefits to more like reference kind of sound or a more reference kind of sound. Uh, this is, again, I've talked about this in the past, talking about the last stream, but it's something Fang Bian said when I interviewed him at Can Jam, and I completely agree with it, that when you get a lot of detail, neutral is not boring at all. So, and do you can, last question here, do you consider bass roll off a deviation for neutrality? Um, so if you think about the Harman bass shelf, almost no headphone is going to achieve that, that um, unless, well, there are some like, for example, the, like the closed back ones, but like almost no open back dynamic driver headphones going to achieve that. Um, and uh, so a deviation from that, I don't think is necessarily a deviation from neutrality. Um, it's more so a limitation. I mean, it is in, in one sense, right? But it, it's not, um, it's more of a limitation on the technology and not necessarily, um, you know, because the tuning was, you know, it wasn't a, a deliberate choice there. Um, but if you're looking, if you're thinking about like an HD 600 that kind of rolls off in the bass, then I would say, yeah, that is a deviation from neutrality. Um, cause you know, there's a difference between adhering to the shelf, which is a bass boost that the target has and, you know, rolling off before it extends all the way down to 30 Hertz or whatever. Right. Um, and I think if it rolls off before it extends all the way down to 30 hertz, then yeah, it is a deviation from neutrality. Um, but not one that's particularly, you know, bad. I think there's, it's not, you know, the worst thing in the world. It just will make it sound a little lean, you know, by comparison. Um, but yeah, like you can have great sounding headphones that have that, that quality to a certain extent, like the HD 600. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to get the giveaway going here and, um, so I'm going to grab everybody's name. A lot of people signed up <laughs> during the live stream. That's awesome. All right. And so, yeah, just so you guys know, I do run it through a tool that gets rid of duplicates. Okay. So I would love a drum roll, please. Uh, one thing. Um, so we did open this up to people who aren't in, you know, just in North America. But whoever wins this, if you are not in North America, um, we'll have to coordinate with you on the shipping. You will have to pay for, you know, whatever the customs are to you know, import it to your country and, and shipping and whatnot. Um, but yeah, let's get a drum roll going, guys. Brr. <laughs> oh, I see you want more Q&A. Well, yeah, that's... Uh, We've gone, I've gone now for about an hour, over an hour. So <laughs> we'll do another one soon. Um, yeah, lots of burr going on here. All right. 
I'm going to select the name now. And I'm only going to read out the, um, well, I was going to read out the YouTube name, but uh, the YouTube name is the person's name who won. So the winner here for the Dunu SA6 and Blanche Cable is Trevor L. So congratulations to Trevor L. <laughs> We will. Uh, I'll. will send you an email, Trevor, and we'll coordinate the, uh, the shipping, um, and if, you know, just send us your uh, shipping information. And uh, yeah, congratulations, Trevor. You've won a Dunu SA6, which is not in here, <laughs> but this is the case, uh, and a Blanche cable uh, modular cable system. Um, and you know, actually, that's something. The winners of these giveaways, including Trevor. Trevor, congrats, congratulations. For the winner of these winners of these giveaways, we would love to hear your thoughts on the you know the headphones that you've won. You know, like it, by all means, like post on the forums or wherever, and just you know let us know what you think. Um, if you like them, if you don't, that's fine. But you know, see what uh, see what you think. Let us know. Alrighty, guys. <laughs> Definitely not an L for Trevor. <laughs> I feel bad for like saying people's names. Um but that was that was the name that I got. So <laughs> Alrighty guys. Um thanks to everybody for tuning in. And like I mentioned before, um we're gonna be doing giveaways every month. And if you wanna know just like what the giveaway is and you you know are not um a normal subscriber to the channel, um definitely well definitely do so or consider doing it. Uh, but also we have we actually have a page on headphones.com that um, I'm going to try and update you know every month um, so we know sort of what the giveaways are going are gonna to be and in general it's going to be um, near the end of the month when we do the giveaways so um, I'll try and update it early on in the month um, for that page so the page is headphones.com slash pages slash giveaways and um yeah, I'll, I'll probably link that in the description of this afterwards as well. It's linked in. Oh, no, it, it is linked in there right now. So uh, stay tuned to that page. Um, and then, of course, uh, subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, I'm going to uh, take off here. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. And thanks to everybody for participating in the Super Chat. Once again, congrats to Trevor L. <laughs>